long time no see. So, you probably saw the new episode of um, the show. Uh, I was pretty pleased with it. I thought it came out pretty good. Um, wanted to take some time to just do one more uh, video blog real quick um, and just give a quick update about some of the things that are going to be happening on the show um, for dude you haven't played this game. So I guess we'll just go right into it and first just go over some games and stuff. So this is, um, I haven't done one of these in a while, but this is some of the stuff that I've recently picked up in the past, geez, what, like two months or so, probably? About two and a half, two months? So um, in no particular order, uh, we're just gonna start off. So first one is, uh, the Great Circus Mystery. It's uh, it's, it's technically the sequel to uh, Magical Quest, starring Mickey and uh, no, actually, it was just Mickey. Uh, so uh, it's a great game. It's fun. Um, it's a uh, little easy at times, um, but you can play as Mickey or Minnie, and it's a uh, it's it's a it's a good piece of piece of uh, Disney, you know, gaming. So, it's a solid title. Picked it up for, I think, maybe like six bucks, I think, if I recall. Um, got it here in Connecticut, Retro Games Plus, great store. Um, so that's that. Um, picked up one of my, uh, one of the games that I really enjoyed when I was younger and uh, never beat, not, never got around to beating it. So I picked this up and I really enjoy it. And so, Super Adventure Island. Great game. Fantastic. Um, it definitely requires a lot of repetition when playing. It's one of those types of games where you're just like, ugh, like, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Anyways. Uh, Final Fight 2. Good stuff. Um, it's, it's in particularly pretty good condition. There's some, if you look real close, you could see it there. Apparently, somebody felt the need to write 1767 on this. I'm not sure why. But uh, Final Fight 2 is a great title. Um, it uh, definitely isn't as good as the first one. Um, I think I talked a little bit about it in my Final Fight review. It's, it's okay, don't get me wrong. Um, I like the different variation of characters that you play as. But just the, the 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 fact that they're all shrunken down. Oh, I've got like burpees. Uh, the fact that they're all shrunken down is not exactly the the, the greatest look for Final Fight. Uh, to me, Final Fight looks much better with like nice, full, big sprites and um, really colorful graphics. And it does have that. But just, I don't know, something about it, it's it's not bad, it's not a bad title, it's just like, uh, meh, you know. So, now we move to Nintendo. Uh, Super C. I have never actually owned this game before. A um, friend of mine spotted it and grabbed it for me. And um, it, it's it's good, it's good stuff. Um, it, it's, it, I mean, it's just as good as Contra was, uh, if not better. It, it's, a, it's a great title. Um, and kind of picked up from where the previous title left off. So if you're big into run and gun platformer Contra-ish games, definitely Super C is worth it. Um, got it for 10 bucks. Um, oh, and Final Fight I got for 10 bucks as well, which uh, Final Fight 2 for 10 bucks, that's a good deal. And that was at Game Exchange. So. Um, one thing I will say about Game Exchange, there's a lot of really cheap titles that are that don't come in as often. Uh, that Mega Man Legends 2 game that I got a while back, uh, that I think that sells for like 60 bucks, 80 bucks on on eBay, like 40, 60 around there somewhere. So there's a lot of titles that you'll get at Game Exchange, and I'm going to show you a couple others that um, you know you find out of the blue, and you're like, holy crap! Like I, I can't believe that the price of this is so low. So um, definitely keep an eye out at Game Exchange. There's a lot of really great titles. At, uh, at, um, and if you don't know, um, 
where your local game exchange is, just go to Google and type in game exchange and if there's any in your area, they'll immediately pop up because it recognizes your zip code. Otherwise, just uh, go to game exchange's website and uh, take a look uh, if you're from the US. If you're from the UK, because I know I have a couple, uh, some UK viewers out there, uh, same thing. Um, I don't believe that Game Exchange has any UK stores, just like I know there's no game stores. Uh, I think you guys have a franchise called Games. Um, there's none of that in, in where, um, uh, in the US. So, and of course Australia, uh, Europe, the rest of Europe, uh, and, uh, Japan, I don't know, sorry guys. Um, you have your own game stores. Anyways, uh, this is a title that I, well, okay. This is one of my favorite games of all time, Ninja Gaiden 2. I've owned it before, I've gotten rid of it. I don't know why, it's a great game. Uh, part of me, a couple years back, I was really, really big on, on, dumping my physical collection and getting games on the Wii. So I started buying all these games and I was spending so much money and one day it just clicked and, and I said to myself, why am I buying so many games on the virtual console that I'll probably never play? Um, and I do play them, um, but one of the reasons why I played them so much is when I was living at my old apartment, um, my I had a big screen TV as you can see I was in the middle watching Frasier. But as you can see, I have an LCD TV. You've seen this before. Um, it's a Sharp Aquios. It's a great TV. Um, I, I also owned, uh, technically still kind of own, it's a uh, Sony 53-inch uh, like rear projection uh, with like wood paneling. It's like an old, old school uh, TV. And it's been my family for a very long time. And uh, it's currently at my mom's house, so I have to get rid of it. Um, I just I, I love I loved the thing to death, um, but it, it was it's time it was time for it to go. So it still works. Um, if anybody's interested in buying it, you would have to do a local pickup. So um, I'm selling it for like nothing. Like I think maybe honestly, if you can get rid of it for like 20 bucks, I honestly I'll take like 20 50 bucks, whatever you feel you want to give. Um, you know, but I'm pretty lenient on on price. So if anybody's interested, if anybody is in the Connecticut area and you're interested in a big screen TV, um, it works pretty good. I haven't really had, I had some issues with it. It's funny, I had some issues, we took it apart and we put it back together and it worked fine. And I paid the guy, uh, the TV repairman, and that was it. Um, and ever since then I really haven't been having too many problems. I had a couple other issues where just it, won't turn on like the screen won't turn on but then I turn it off and turn it back on and it works fine so if you're interested you know please take it off my hands I don't want it anymore we're trying to get rid of it so uh, if nobody I mean eventually that sometime this summer I'm probably gonna see what I can do about helping them dispose of it but anyways that's not the point the the point is that I was downloading a lot of games uh, on the virtual console just because I, I felt like I felt like, you know, um, because the basement TV, that was the basement TV, the, the big screen 53 inch, that was the point I was trying to make. The, the big screen, the 53 inch, it was in the basement, and our basement was freezing at my old uh, apartment. And uh, I hated going down there in the winter because it was always so, so, so cold, and it was just awful to play old school games down there. So I started downloading a lot of titles on the Wii, and... Um, you know, racked up quite a few. I think I, got, I have about 20, 20 to 25 titles. Um, you know, and, and it's all stuff pretty much that I already own. So I started selling some of my connect collection. Um, I sold all my Ninja Gaidens. I sold uh, Donkey Kong Country 1 and 2, which I gotta get those back. But uh, I, my physical collection's here to stay, definitely. This time I'm not gonna sell it to get rid of it. Um, and you know, you everybody's got their own opinion on it. Um, going back and forth between physical and um, and virtual. Um, the problem with virtual is if it, if it breaks, if your system breaks down, that's it, you're done. Especially with the Wii, because there's no like transfer policy. So you have to send it into Nintendo and hope that they repair it, which in 20 years, that ain't gonna happen. So it's, it's not worth it in a lot of, in, in a lot of sense. Though they do have a lot of really cool titles um, on the Wii. 
for downloadable that are like Japanese only that you know you would need to you know get all this like random stuff that you would need to plug in like you know uh, for N64 you know and Super Nintendo and all these uh, various different systems even like the um, even like the Mega Drive and the Genesis uh, with with all the carts with the differences in the tabs and all this you know bullshit um, so it's it's really just not worth it anyways I'm rambling um, Ninja Gaiden 2 fantastic game definitely recommend it um, next game is a game that I've also never owned and I got it for, for a good deal at Retro Games Plus also you know same store uh, it's in Westport Connecticut um, this is Rocking Cats it's a great little title as you can see um, it's made by Atlas it's uh, it's good stuff it's a platformer um, that is television it's kind of like television based and um, got it uh, for I think 17 I think I paid which uh, I've never seen it out in the wild like that so it was really cool to just be able to grab it and see it and be like huh be like I've never actually seen this game in the wild I'm gonna buy this so that was a good you know pickup um, got Star Fox 64 with the, this is the Player's Choice Edition and it has uh, as far as uh, the condition the condition's pretty good um, I really didn't know about you know the difference as far as you know cost I'm up here hi staring at my boobies um, I really didn't know the difference as far as uh, cost goes for the uh, for the um, Star Fox games for uh, for the N64 I didn't wanna I, I wanted to pick it up just be, just to have it I had the cartridge and I was like, oh, I'll trade in the other one. So I did, I traded it in. But, um, you know, you've got everything in here that it came with. Manual, manual's in uh, good shape. I mean, this thing is like, you know, it's like brand new. It's, it's good stuff, a little booklet thingy. And uh, the cart's in good shape too. So I was um, overall pretty, pretty impressed with it. So I picked it up for I think ten bucks, eight eight ninety nine, nine bucks, something like that. Great price for a box game, especially for N sixty four. N sixty four starting to get really pricey now. Uh, some of their games are pretty high, especially the box games. Um, so um, while I was, um, I went to oh boy, what was the name of that store? Um, the store in New Jersey, I think I talked a little bit about it in my last blog uh, that I was going there for my birthday. And I don't think I showed this off, but um, I ended up, I didn't really buy that much, but I did end up buying this Pitfall on Sega CD. I don't actually own a Sega CD. Um, I wish I did. Uh, one of these days I'll get around to buying it, but it's, uh, it's in good shape. Um, as you can see, the manual's in really top-notch shape, and it was it was pretty low in price. Um, digital uh, Digital Press is the name of the store. Great store. I mean, they have a lot of really cool stuff. The biggest gripe I have with Digital Press is a lot of their stuff that's out is only out for display, so their collection seems a lot more impressive than it actually is. Um, when you walk in store or even before you get to it, um, first off, it's it's like a hole in the wall. I didn't even know where, like we're driving through, I went with my girlfriend and a couple friends, and uh, uh, we get to the front door and it's just, it, it was just ridiculous. I, I was like, I, I could have sworn this place was bigger, I thought it was way bigger. You go in and it's a lot bigger than you would have, that you would have thought when you look at the outside, but it's, I was just shocked. Uh, at, at how small the place looked on the outside. Well, anyways, you're walking into the outside from the outside to the inside, and uh, they have like a display with a bunch of games there, like boxed games. And one of them was Castlevania: Legacy of Darkness. Um, I think that's the name of the game. Yeah, I, I can't. Remember. Yeah, I think Legacy of Darkness. Um, and I, that's one of the games I've been wanting for a very long time because I'm a huge Castlevania fan. Um, not a fan of what's been going on with the franchise lately, but um, old school Castlevania, you know, anything before Lords of the Shadow, uh, great stuff. 
So I'm trying to get all the Castlevania games. Um, you've seen that box copy of the Sharp X6800 that I that I have there, um, or X68000. Uh, you know, stuff like that. I'm trying to get. So when I went in there, I asked them very first thing because I would have walked out of the store with just that game and would have been satisfied. Um, asked them, you know, if I can grab it, and they said there's no game inside. So I'm like, what do you mean there's no game inside? Like, oh, that's just for display. There's no sticker on it that says for display only, so it's a little disappointing. And some of the some of the systems that they have in the cases, they have some really cool stuff. I mean, they've got you know various different Sega CDs from all you know across the you know the the releases, you know the different releases of it, the front loading one, the the um, the the one that you um, yeah, the one that with the tray that comes up, and then the one that pops open. They have those boxed. They had um, like a 3DO and a Turbo Graphics and all these crazy systems, but none of them are in the boxes. Um, they also had a, a lot of really cool Zelda-based uh, stuff where they had uh, um, in the back, uh, they had like a whole Zelda shrine, which was really cool. A lot of nice uh, magazines. I picked up a couple strategy guides, uh, Perfect Dark and um, a couple others. I uh, picked up some controllers. Oh, um, oh, come on, let's go. Okay. Also picked up... Uh, yeah, um, these two real quick, uh, Mole Mania, which I actually got from Retro Games Plus, so that has nothing to do with this, and I'm kind of rambling, so I apologize, and then Fortified Zone, which I bought on eBay uh, a while back. You may have heard me playing Fortified Zone during the Chip and Dale review, um, so it's, like I said, it's been a while, I, I don't think I actually showed Fortified Zone that I bought it. Um, but th that's that's what's been uh, going on as far as that goes. But yeah, so Digital Press, nice store, but overall, I don't know. I think the, all the people that have been saying that it was the mecca of New England gamers and you know upper Northeast gamers, it, it it really isn't. I mean, I went to Retro Games Plus is just as expensive, and they have way more stuff. Um, and they get more stuff in at a, at a very quick rate and you know the owner's awesome he's a nice guy and uh, you know staff is friendly and it's closer to me um, so I I mean no I don't think I'll go back to digital press anytime soon unless I'm like in the area or if it's like hey I'm driving to New Jersey let me stop by so um, a couple other games real quick um, this, this is a big moment for me because I finally get to show off Xenoblade uh, Chronicles. This is the alternative uh, uh, cover, which is very, very pretty. Um, it, it's, it's really, it, it's a great game. So it's, uh, it's good stuff. Oh, well, Trauma Team's in there because the, it's in my system right now. But um, it's it's just fantastic. It, it's an excellent game. It's well worth it. Um, it, it really because I never played really WoW uh, WoW World of Warcraft that much. I I tried it out. I just I couldn't get into it. Um, I'm a big fan of making characters, and you don't make any characters in this. But it's it's like they merged a one player experience with an MMO with a standard like classic RPG like you know Chrono Trigger or. Um, Final Fantasy 6 VI or 7 or 5 or whatever. So it's, it's, it's got these, these classic elements mixed in with a brand new feel and story. It's great. It's excellent. Uh, I was going to review it eventually when I beat it, but I just I really haven't had time to play it. Um, I, I, I finally beat Batman Arkham City and that was great and beat Saints Row 3 and I just I really haven't been playing classic games or anything on my Wii lately. So um, uh, you know that that's basically it um, two other games uh, and then that's pretty much it we're done uh, and then we'll get to the stuff about the the show uh, Zeno Gears uh, and I got it at Game Exchange for a pretty decent price uh, this is the black label version so um, it, it's in it's in really top-notch shape they they did clean it up a little bit so show it off a little bit here um, the the Disc one was was in pretty good shape. Yeah, you see the fan, the fan, and uh, <laughs> I'm a fan of of Zeno Gears. 
Um, so, yeah, I um, picked up Zeno Gears. It's, 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 you know, it's good stuff. Uh, manual's in great shape. The other disc needed to be cleaned. So they, they went ahead and tidied it up a little bit. So it's it's nice now that they buffered it. And look, there's the fan again. Um, so it's 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 a good title. But I picked it up for probably about 20, 20, 26, I think. Which is, it's a pretty good price. I mean, I'm shocked at how low the price is now for that game. Because <coughs> I remember a couple years ago, it was crazy. You could buy the game for like 60 bucks, 40, 50 bucks. And, uh, and that was expensive, you know, for for a, a PS1 game. That was pretty pricey uh, back then uh, because it was long after. It was in the PS2 era. But it was one of those games that has really shot down in value. And it, it's it's kind of sad because it's, uh, it's you know, I haven't played it. But from what I've heard, it's a good game. So that's, that's going in the collection. And then I found this, Vampire Hunter D. Uh, this I got for about 12 bucks. And... Uh, this is a nice little title, and uh, everything's in good shape on that one. Um, haven't played this one, but it looks really cool, and uh, I'm a big fan of the series, and the and you know just of Yoshitaka Amano. Anything that Amano touches is pretty much godly. So that's pretty much it for the games uh, for a while. I don't plan on buying any more games for a while other than The Last Story and maybe Lollipop Chainsaw. I don't know if I'm actually going to get that or not, but uh, I'd love to get it because it looks ridiculous. Uh, but other than that, I don't think I'm going to be buying too much in the near future, um, just money-wise, finances and stuff. Uh, but I do plan on saving up for something special which I will show hopefully if I can get it uh, we will see but it's like more of a long-term thing and I've got so many games I need to beat and so many other things oh one other thing I forgot this was the other thing I bought I finally bought a master system you probably can't see it that well but uh, it's not actually plugged into anything got a master system it's in good condition and uh, it, it works quite well so, um, I picked up, oh yeah, that's right, I did pick up some Master System games. I got Quartet, which is probably going to be right, well, I don't know, I'm not going to dig for it. And when I grabbed Toe Jam and Earl, uh, as well, that was another game. So I've gotten a lot over the past couple months. Just some of this stuff I just haven't shown in previous videos, uh, that I've been picking up, so, um... Like I said, it's gotten a little out of control with the games um, lately because I've, I've been finding such great deals. Um, I think the only other game that I'm looking for right now that I'm seriously interested in buying is uh, uh, Battletoads uh, for Game Boy. Not the original, but the Ragnarok World one. I think I might snag that if I can find it for dirt cheap on eBay. But if I can't, I'm just going to wait because um, I'm broke. So probably no more games for quite some time. Uh, so now... Done with the games. Uh, announcement for uh, the next episode, dude, you uh, haven't played this game. Um, I will have a special guest. So um, hopefully uh, I'm going to be filming it this weekend um, with uh, our special guest. And I think it's going to be a good episode. Uh, we were originally going to do Super Battletoads, but um, just uh, hardware issues will prevent me from doing that. So, um, plan on seeing something soon, hopefully uh, this weekend. Um, cross your fingers, of course. And then I've got another episode planned that's going to be um, big, and that is Vector Man. Uh, so, Vector Man's going to be uh, huge. I've got uh, Nickel Punk doing uh, a, a rendition, like some sort of a rendition of uh, one of the songs from Vector Man so it's it, he's really putting a lot of effort into this one you know more than normal because I know he's a huge fan and that was actually his request uh, to do so right now I'm trying to plow through the game um, I'm not doing too good um, I'm, I'm in like stage five and I just you know I'm just sucking it's it's a tough one it's a tough game but uh, it's it's good stuff so uh, plan on that that's going to be the long-term review got a couple other games in mind for uh, reviews Aston X um, maybe some other stuff so we'll see um, but I just wanted to give a quick update about uh, the show 
and let you guys know that you will be seeing more stuff very soon, so stay tuned. And uh, that is the end of the video blog. So, okay, bye.